guys, today I want to talk about a difficult subject. Um, this is one that I have struggled with for many, many, many years. And because I've been grooming over 40 years and I've been in a grooming salon every day, just about for the last 57 years. Yeah. Um, cause I grew up in the business. Um, I've seen it over and over and over and over and over again, and it's a struggle. And this subject is about grooming senior dogs. There's a lot of challenges presented with grooming senior dogs. There are liabilities. There are questions of whether it is humane. There are questions about injuries to the dogs. Um, just so many questions. So for me, I have considered this, you know, when you groom a dog its entire life uh, and you've developed a bond with the dog and a bond with the pet parent, sometimes there comes a time when I am no longer comfortable working on the dog. And you know, what does that mean? What does being comfortable working on the dog mean? Many times I am very, very, very straightforward with my clients and I tell them like it is. I tell them that grooming can kill their dog. You heard me, it can kill your dog. Um, it's at that point when I decide to stop or if I feel that the process is abusive and you might say, well, why would the process be abusive? Wouldn't that be on you? Wouldn't you be the one causing the abuse? Yeah, to get it done. Um, but that's why I stop. I'm like, this is crossing the line. And I'll be honest, there was one dog who I groomed every two weeks her entire life. And I committed to that pet parent that no matter what, we're going to finish this thing out together because I had refused service on some seniors, you know, in the past and it broke my heart and it broke my heart for the pet parent and they just went somewhere else and got it done anyway. And, you know, they found somebody who was willing to do it. And so I decided, okay, no more. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to commit to this pet parent and I'm going to finish this thing out. And I did. I felt horrible about it. You know, the dog came in every two weeks. She was not matted. She was a senior Lhasa Apso, um, but she just couldn't handle it. And snapping and biting and thrashing, where she was, you know, pretty good most of her life. She was a typical Lhasa. You know, they, they, can, they can be very adamant about what they don't like. But, you know, she had to get tranquilized. And when she was tranquilized, she was out of it, but she was still biting. You know, you couldn't get the water anywhere near her head. You know, to brush and comb, you would have to hold her tight to get it done. If they're snapping and flailing and ah. So the Shih Tzus who pass out on you, it, it seems to be more that breed than any other that I've seen this on. That's a breed with the pushed in face. They have an elongated palate. And uh, from what I've studied, that also goes to a heart issue when they do that. And the pet parents used to it. They, they say when they go out for walks or they go outside or they go in the bathtub, they conk over, pass out. A lot of times will defecate on themselves and then get right back up. And if it happens here and you tell the pet parent, yeah, he does that all the time. You should have told me. You know, once I know they do it, I'm not gonna stop grooming the dog, but I do tell the pet parent of the risk that when this dog goes down and he gets back up and he goes down 
and he gets back up, one time he's going to go down, and he's not going to get back up. And I tell them like it is. Make sure that they know. And then every time they come in, I tell them again. I tell them again. And so, you know, those kind of situations, I go on with the dog because I'm not abusing the dog in the process. I'm not having to scruff the dog to hold him tight to get the face done. And okay, the, there's groomers out there, you should never scruff a dog that's abuse. But exactly, that's my point. But sometimes if you've got a thrashing, snapping senior, there's no way to get around the face you can tell me otherwise, but I know better. There's no way to get around that face without stretching the skin back, keeping your hands away from the teeth zone, which is why most people do scruff, because they can keep out of the teeth area, stretch the skin, and, and make it as safe as possible. If you don't stretch that skin back, it's not safe to clip her on the face. If the face is matted, you have to clip her on the face, right? Right. So don't be preaching that, that junk to me. I've been doing this too long. I know better, okay? I, I also handled a dog. He was a senior. Um, he, I took him on as a 15-year-old dog in congestive heart failure. She said nobody else would groom him. Nobody else would do him. And would I please consider taking him on? So I had some very real, honest conversations with her. I'm like, you know he's been in congestive heart failure for a year and a half. You know that the vet has told you that he's gone past his life expectancy. You know that grooming can cause death because of his heart issues, because he doesn't like being done, because he screams and thrashes and bites, that, you know, this could be detrimental. Yes, I know, please, 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 nobody else will do him. Please, please do him, please. Nobody else will help me, I need your help. I groomed the dog successfully for another year. And on his last visit, she had a house party because she moved. It was a birthday plus a, a moving in party, uh, housewarming party, went on till 3 a.m. with her old dog who had just moved, who's in congestive heart failure, who's blind, who doesn't know his way around this new house and all these people and all this noise. She was up most of the night. She got up, his appointment was at 7 a.m. She did not give him his heart medication. She woke up, snatched him up, ran to the groomer. She waited in her car. She wasn't allowed to leave the parking lot. I told her, you know, you, you have to stay. When she brought him in, she says, you know, can we please, it's a poodle, can we please shave his face? I'm like, he won't let me anywhere near his face. Please, please try. I'm like, it's not good for him to put him through that much stress. I don't want to do that. Please, please, please do the best you can. And every time I'd say, I can't, she'd say, do the best you can. I can't do the best you can. So I did the best I can. He was very quiet. He wasn't his normal snappy little alligator rolling self. And I noticed he was very quiet and I got him done and you know, it concerned me that he was quiet, but he wasn't doing anything odd. And, you know, she had her other dog with her and she traded off dogs. And a few minutes later, she comes in and she's like, what's wrong with my dog? And I'm like, he was a little quiet. And she goes, well, I'm taking him to the emergency animal hospital. And, you know, I'm mad as heck. I told you to be careful with my dog. I told you the situation with my dog. I told you to be careful. They ended up putting him down that day. She blamed me for um, killing her dog, basically. And she went off on me. And 
I started studying um, different situations that other groomers experience in um, this sort of situation where they are blamed for the dog's demise. So there's one, and I'm gonna link all these videos below so that you can see. So that there was one, it was a 13 year old Labrador retriever with diabetes who was excessively obese. And the client took the dog to the vet in the morning and then she left the vet and took the dog to the groomer and had the dog washed. The dog died three days later and she was on the news slandering the groomer because they killed her dog. Now, 13 year old obese dog with diabetes and other health ailments is going to pass away at some point. Did the grooming kill the dog? I seriously doubt it. But the fact is that these things happen and they can happen and they do happen. So all that being said, let's get down to the point of why these things happen. Collapsing trachea, heart problems, kidney failure, diabetes, all the sorts of things that senior dogs can have. Um, probably the number one reason that I see senior dogs really struggle with grooming is bad teeth. Is that the pet parent's fault? In many cases, no. They, they get bad teeth and they get to the point where because of all their other health ailments, they can't be put under to have the teeth pulled. So what can you do about that? If your dog is not yet at this stage, first things first, keep up with your dog's teeth throughout its whole life. So that when you get to the point where the dog can no longer have it done, they're starting off at the best case scenario. I see many times people with dogs 10 or 11 years old whose dog's teeth are getting horrible. And they say, I'm afraid to have him put under. He's getting older. I'm just gonna let all his teeth fall out. Back in the day, we never had this done. This isn't really necessary. That's when you need to have it done the most. Before your dog gets too ill, because if you let it go on and on and on, 11 years, 12 years, 13 years, 14 years, when your dog hits 15, he's got these painful abscesses, rotten teeth, swollen gums, and he's not gonna let you anywhere near his head. So start him off, set up for success. Don't let him get set up for failure. Does that mean it won't happen? Yeah, he could still get an abscess tooth. Yeah, he could still get a loose tooth, but his teeth are going to start off at 14, set up for 15. That's number one. Um, and if your dog gets an abscess tooth, if the vet says, he's too old, I cannot put him under anesthesia, he's got a bad heart, we cannot pull that tooth, talk to your vet about what you can do. Instead of backing off of grooming and backing off of vet care, step it up, do more. So to do more, what I mean is talk to your vet about your options. With one of my senior dogs, she couldn't get put under anesthesia anymore to have her teeth done. The vet said, let's do antibiotic therapy where we pulse therapy, where we do a few weeks on antibiotics, a month off, a few weeks on, a month off. Antibiotic resistance is a problem, but not when your dog is at that age living with an abscess tooth, right? You gotta stave off that infection. So talk to your vet about your options. If your vet says we can do it, it's a little risky, but we can do it, do it. Get your dog's teeth done. Are you afraid that dog's gonna die on the table? Yes, you are. 
Am I afraid with my dogs? Yes, I am. But, and here's the big thing. Are you going to let your dog live in pain? Or if your dog passes away on the table, are you going to know that your dog passed away with you trying to help him? Is that cold? Is that hard? Should I not say that? Maybe, but that's how I talk to my clients when I'm face to face. And that's how I'm going to talk with you. And many times they get it done on, on my encouragement. And then their dog's bouncing around acting like a puppy when he was sitting in the corner like this. And they're like, thank you so much. Thank you for being honest with me. Thank you for encouraging me. I can't tell you how much it means to me. So I'm gonna be honest with you. All right, next, glaucoma. Many times with my Shih Tzu clients, especially, and certain other breeds, they won't let me anywhere near their face. I check their teeth, their teeth don't look too bad. It's like this dog has been good all its life and now it's thrashing and throwing its head. So let's get on to the next point, condition. Most of the time people leave their old dog alone because he doesn't want to be bothered and they let his hair get matted. Either that or they've been in a pattern of letting their dog get mad at its whole life. I've seen that many, many, many times. But even dogs who are grown monthly and even dogs who are never matted are a huge struggle at certain points in their life, especially when they're seniors. Um, dogs that have been good their whole life become difficult at a certain point. In those situations, when you're dealing with a thrashing, biting senior who's gator rolling, you have to get that clipper blade in between the mat. Say this is the mat and this is the skin. You've got to get that clipper blade and peel that hair off like an orange peel. On a senior who is thrashing, snapping, biting, frail, potentially bad heart, arthritic, potentially bad back, who knows? Collapsing trachea, who knows? We're hairstylists, we're not vets. We can't diagnose this dog in front of us as we're forcing it through a procedure. So for those, That's the tough one. So there are groomers who pride themselves on helping those dogs. There are groomers who specialize in helping those dogs. And do those dogs need help? Yes. Do those dogs need grooming? Yes. So the groomers who can get it done, does it mean they're better groomers? No. Does it mean they're more skilled? No. What it means is that they are willing to put their own livelihood aside. They're willing to put their reputation aside. They're willing to put aside getting sued or getting bashed to help your dog. Being honest with you, I'm just, I'm laying it out there. I'm telling you how it is. So when it comes to my dogs and my husband and I have had this conversation if one of our dogs ever gets to that point, what will I do? I'm not going to have somebody else do it, right? What will I do? Hmm. That's a good question. So I've thought about this long and hard. Number one, I know what to look for on health issues. So I'm going to prevent as many health issues as possible, right? Um, and that just comes from 57 years of not only being in a grooming salon, but breeding programs, boarding kennels, blah, 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 pet stores. So there's a lot of experience there to pull off of. Number two, my dog's teeth are never neglected, ever. And like I said, if one of my dogs had bad teeth and it was a high risk to put him under 
I would either do antibiotic pulse therapy or I would go ahead and take the risk and put them under anesthesia because um, I'm not going to let them live with bad teeth at all, ever. That is like a no-go for me. My dogs never get matted and no matter how old they get, if I have to step up the grooms, not back off the grooms, do more, more, more to make sure they never get matted, then I can handle the groom easier without as much risk. If my dogs ever become, and then, you know, dogs can be perfect their whole life and then snap into something else. It's like Alzheimer's, it's like sundowner syndrome. They go from being perfect, perfect, perfect to be the, being these snappy little things and I've seen it with my client's dogs over and over and over again. So if one of my dogs ever ends up at that point to where I cannot groom him without forcing him through it, I'm going to start thinking about quality of life. I'm going to start thinking about what's fair to the animal. And, you know, I'm going to make some tough decisions. Now, you may hate me for that as well, but... I'm not going to force my own dog through grooming to make myself feel better about keeping him around longer. Is that hard? Yeah, it's hard. To think of doing that with this guy, come here, buddy. <laughs> to think about doing that with him brings tears to my eyes. Just the thought. Right? But I'm not going to neglect him. I'm not going to hurt him. And I'm not going to force him. So that's my conclusion on this. What am I going to do if my dog gets to that point? Right? So far, I've had many dogs over my life and... You know, I've never had to come to that point. It came close with Hannah, my carry Blue Terrier. She had cancer, she had an autoimmune disorder, and her teeth were abscessing every couple of months. And the vet said, you know, after three dentals in one year, they were like, we can't put her under anymore. And so we did the Bolts therapy. That continued for a year, and then, you know, that was it, but she was getting, because of the abscesses in her mouth, you know, and we would have to keep pushing them off, you know, she was getting to the point where she was like, don't touch me, you know. That's hard, that's just hard. So, in our group, uh, Dog Grooming Tips and Tricks on Facebook, Somebody posted a video of a rescue dog that's 17 years old that's matted solid. His tail's completely encased. Um, he needs to be shaved down. Finding a groomer to take on a 17-year-old dog who's never been that dog's groomer before, very difficult. And it's because of all the liabilities, potential lawsuits, the slander on social media, the slander with the news stations, the videos I'm going to post below, are people who went to the news stations in those groomers' towns and slandered them. You know, as a small business owner, do you want to risk that to um, handle a new client at 17 who's matted solid? So does that mean I never take them on? I do. And many people who watch me are my clients who could very well say, she took on my dog at 15. She took on my dog at 18. I always give it a go. And usually I'm happy that I did. And so I never turn away a dog because of its age. I only turn it away if I feel what I'm doing is abusive. And it's not because I'm abusive. It's because 
in order to hold a dog still enough when it's matted solid on its face and ears, when it's a thrashing senior snapping, you have to hold tight. And that's the one thing these dogs, especially seniors, hate is you have to hold them. And you have to hold them tighter because you gotta hold that head still while they're thrashing and that gets their heart going. It, it gets their joints. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the couple of questions that came in in our group about this situation are tough ones. Do I have an answer? I don't. I'm just laying it all out there so that you can think about it. So first for you guys, find a groomer that'll help you. If you can't find a groomer that'll help you, find an animal hospital with grooming that might help you. You know, and, and there are mobile groomers that will come and do it. Does that mean they're safer? Does that mean the dog's calmer? No, they're still getting forced through it. So am I all over the place on this? Am I saying a bunch of different stuff? Yep, because that's how it is in my head. I'm telling you how it is in my head. I'm telling you how all over the place my heart and my head and my business person and my friend and my, you know, relationship and my bond, it's all over the place. It, it's, it's hard. It's hard. That's all I'm trying to say. I've had clients who have had dogs who were not struggling. So if a dog has a health issue, I continue to groom it even though it could pass away because I'm not forcing the dog through the groom. So that's my big issue. I don't want to force the dog through the groom. So, you know, I've had one who was in kidney failure actually several over the years who were in kidney failure. This one was a two and a half pound poodle who was coming up on 16 in, in kidney failure. So, you know, very, I groomed her every single week, her entire life. I was the dog's godmother and, and, you know, I cared for her when she was out of town. You know, the dog was very, very close to me. I handled her all the way up till the day she died. And I told the pet parent, I'm like, you know, she could pass away while she's here. She could pass away at home. She could pass away in the car on the way here. She could pass away anytime, right? And she's like, I know, but I would rather she died with you than with me. I've been told that so many times. <clears throat> You know, I'm going to share a few videos in this segment, um, but um, you guys who watch me regular saw Sasha the Pomeranian gasping every time she got a bath, struggling to breathe, tongue fading from purple to pink to purple to pink. I finally made the decision that grooming was going to kill her and that I couldn't do it. Even though she loved me, even though she was always happier after she got done, even though the pet parent waited in the waiting room, even though the pet parent was fully understanding that she could pass away during the groom, I came to the point where I didn't want to be the one to kill the dog. Did she still need a bath? Yeah, mom had to take up doing it at home and I guess that's where this whole thing's coming down to. You know, I handle dogs all the way up to a certain point until I feel that the grooming's going to kill the dog. It's no longer a question of your dog could die here. It gets to the point where more likely than not, the stress of the groom is going to kill your dog. That's when I stop. Now, some of these dogs have gone on and gotten done by mobile groomers and they continue on for another year. 
Does that make me feel bad? Yeah. But if their tongue's turning blue during the groom, so let me let me explain it this way because again, this is a long conversation, but it is, and it's all over the place. I agree, but say I'm grooming a dog whose tongue's turning blue while I'm grooming it, but he's not showing anything else. So say the dog dies here during the groom. Say the pet parent becomes irate and decides to sue. Say we go in front of somebody, say like Judge Judy, right? Just use that for an example. Judge Judy would look at me and she would say, you saw the dog's tongue turning blue and you didn't stop? I'm like, well, his tongue turns blue every time. It's part of what happens with this dog. You saw the dog's tongue turning blue and you didn't stop? It's normal for him. It's normal for his tongue to turn blue? Well, yeah. Well, then you're definitely at fault. You knew there was a problem and you continued on anyway. Therefore, you are liable. That's exactly what she would say. What defense do you have? If you're a groomer, what defense do you have? So, if a dog's in kidney failure and he could die at any time, I'm gonna groom him. If the dog passes out and gets back up and passes out, but his tongue's not turning blue, I'll groom him. If the dog has glaucoma, needs to be groomed, is really fussy around the face, but it's not abusive, I will groom him. If the dog has bad teeth, and he's on Colts therapy and he's being treated regularly by the vet, I will groom him. So anyway, that's my all over the place TED talk here. <laughs> Did I give you any answers? No. Did I give you some suggestions? Hopefully. Number one, if your dog's not matted yet, don't let him get matted. Number two, if your dog has issues where their tongue's fading in and out of blue, don't go with a mobile groomer. Don't go with another groomer who says, yes, we can do it. We love seniors. Take them to an animal hospital to get groomed. Set up a, uh, if you have one in your area, set up as a regular client with that animal hospital groomer so that if something happens, the dog can get oxygen. Um, right away, like instantly. Um, if you're afraid to have your dog's teeth done and he needs it, but he's in good health, get the dog's teeth done. If the dog were to die on the table, he died with you doing the right thing. Keep your dog's teeth brushed. That's going to help him you know, especially if you start them now when they're younger, when they get older, they're going to be used to having their head face held. Wash their eyes daily. Don't let the heavy crust build up. That gets anaerobic bacteria. It gets swollen and puffy. It gets raw and irritated. And when we're dealing with a senior who's thrashing his head and we've got to get that off, it's impossible to do it safely. Keep your dog's eyes washed. Uh, if your dog is already matted, get him shaved down by whatever means necessary, nose to toes. Start over and don't let him get matted anymore. No matter how old, no matter how goofy he is, figure it out. Figure it out. If he can't be maintained in a non-neglected way, You've got some tough decisions to make. It's just the way it is. So anyway, um, you know, regular veterinary care is important. And also, 
don't say my dog is old, he's 13, I'm not gonna groom him as often as I used to, I'm not gonna go to the vet as often as I used to. That's not the time to back up, that's time to step it up. So if you can't wash and blow dry that dog, have it done at the groomer every, every two weeks, every three weeks. If you can't wash around that dog's eyes, how's the groomer gonna get that crust off of there? You have to do it. You have to figure it out. Um, pet care begins at home. Coat care begins at home. Dental care begins at home. Eye care begins at home. It's you who needs to step it up. It's you who needs to do it. If this is a rescue dog, find an animal hospital with grooming, get that dog shaved, nose to toes, start over, take care of him. So anyway, I'm hoping this helps. I'm hoping I said something that might have helped you to understand the grimmer side of this. And please understand, it breaks our heart. Absolutely breaks our heart when we make the decision to stop. Mm -hmm.